Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about the series, The Boys. The Boys. The Boys. <laughs> yeah, we can't not say that. We are, in, we are about halfway through the third season. Uh, if you haven't watched it at all, I mean, why not? Yep. The first two seasons were great. They're fantastic. Yeah, the third season is... You know, we'll get to it. I think it's there so far. It's on track to be a great season as well. But we're going to start by talking about the first two seasons. We're going to give tons of spoilers because we because they're old, right? It's we're past the no spoiler bit. But if for some reason you haven't seen the first two seasons of The Boys, there will be spoilers in this episode. We'll give you a warning before we give any spoilers about the new season, yes. the third season. Okay. So the premise of the story of The Boys it is. There are superheroes in the world, right? But these superheroes have been apparently created uh, scientifically, chemically by a company, Vought. A pharma, it's a pharmaceutical company. Yeah, it's a pharmaceutical company. And they, the superhero, uh, you know, in my opinion, I think we all agree on this because we've talked about it. This is, the, in a way, the most real, realistic, you know, superhero, you know, uh, franchise that I've encountered in either book or movie or film uh, or cartoon or comic book or whatever because the superheroes are real people in right. all of their douchebaggery. Like that, yeah. they all have all the, the full range of human opinions and frailties. They're not these, these Boy Scout, you know, pristine. They're you know, utterly corrupted pure. by power. They're, and yeah, yeah, they are absolute appropriately power corrupt. Yeah, absolutely. They're, yeah, they're appropriately corrupted by the power that they have. Um, and so, yeah, like, that's like the theme of the boys are, are a group of, of uh, guys who are trying to take out the superheroes based on the premise that no one should have that kind of power. And the, the series as a whole does a great job of totally selling that premise. Yeah. Like you buy, like, yeah, there, there's, the world would not be a better place with superheroes flying around. It would absolutely be a, a worse place for many, many reasons. We could, who could you? Yeah. Who could control them? How could we keep them, you know, from just completely abusing their power? I mean, it would, it's 100% reliant on them as individuals, yeah. their morals, their ability to keep it, to keep themselves sane and real, you know, keeping their egos right. in check. It just seems like an impossible thing. It's like basically take all the billionaires in the world mm -hmm. get, and, and, you know, imagine like trying to rein them back in. Yeah. Now give them superpowers. Right. Now try to rein them back in. Forget about it. It's so. Not the important, right. An important point to make is the boys exist because they have all been hurt in one way or yeah. the other by superheroes. Yeah, right. like supervillains are created. Yeah, right? they're, they're, they're essentially kind of like super, good, super good guys in a sense, right? They yeah. become not super villains, but yeah. super good guys, but, I guess you could but, say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but don't, don't forget, though, that they don't seem to be doing or spending a lot of time saving people it's all about their celebrity yeah. and commodifying their their superhero-ness and making they're like celebrities mm -hmm. and it's all about you know their their q numbers and how much money they're pulling in the movies and it's, yeah. it's all about the tie-ins and making money it's not really about saving people sometimes i i, I say seems to be an afterthought right yeah. sometimes i want to say save somebody let me see you in action you know it's just come on it's all about the celebrity and, and, and mo yeah, ninety percent of it's also awesome. even the the second tier superheroes, right? That aren't making yeah. movies. They're the ones who are on patrol, you know. Right, right. They're also scumbags. I mean, you know, it's, it's, so imagine like your oh worst possible cop with superpowers, right? I mean, that's and worse than that, they're not really trained. They make that point, like when they help the military. The military's like, oh, these guys have no idea what they're doing. They're untrained. They're going to give away our position. It's chaotic. Whatever. They're 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 chaotic. You have you have superheroes basically doing policing in cities, but with no ethics, no training, no standards. Just it's the standards they are vigilantes. Of the company. They are vigilantes. They all work for this company. Yeah, and it's the standards and the the. The personas that the company creates right. for them and the cleanup that the company does to fix all the problems that they create. You're right. right. Instead of like them taking the, the, the time to train them and actually mm -hmm. have them be riding they on just do rails. Up. Yeah. They, they... There's no existential threats. There's no like aliens coming down and where they have to the heroes have to band together to to dispel, you know, some major threat. Like right. like 
like robots taking over or like I said, an alien. That doesn't happen because it's it's kind of realistic and that stuff just doesn't happen every week. Unless you make your supervillains by giving them yes. the same technology. Right. It's all about, yeah, yeah, they're the good guys and the bad guys and they're, like you said, they're, they're the problem. Creating both of them. The the problem. Problem. There's, there's wonderful subtext in this TV yeah. show in, you know, in general that spans throughout all of the seasons. One of them is you'll notice that they keep showing scenes of beauty pageants mm -hmm. and starlight you know one of the main characters yeah. it was a child was in a beauty pageant and if you know anything about the beauty pageant world and you don't have to find out much it's pretty horrifying yeah and the, the superheroes are an extension of the beauty pageant world it's all fake it's 100 percent fake they're it's being all, used as well exactly yeah. absolutely the, the superheroes are being used by the company and mm. by the politicians and everything just like yeah. the kids are in beauty pageants um, and another thing that the show, I think, does extraordinarily well is it's showing, it's showing how unbelievably easy it is to become corrupt as a human mm -hmm. being, right? You know, the, the over-the-top sure. gore that goes along with this show, like death and gore and all that stuff, like the show itself is kind of desensitizing mm -hmm. you in a way that the superheroes become desensitized to mm -hmm. their morals. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it goes hand in hand. And that's another great angle, Jay. This, uh, what I love about this is this is unapologetically, absolutely, 100% adult. This is for adults. Yeah. This is not, not for, kids for kids in any way. Not all in any way, shape, or form. I love that because there's not enough R-rated <laughs> You know stuff like this out there it's yeah. for the family you know which is great but not when it's 99 percent. i mean we, i like that it it's, means they can get realistic yes yeah, much more realistic and have to sanitize it and another that, layer one yeah. thing another awesome layer to this show depending on where you are <laughs> yeah is that there is a political dialogue in mm, this show that, that that is talking about modern day and the and this these seasons even though they shot this a, a year ago at least a year ago when you know mm -hmm. They're still like really up to date on what's going oh, on yeah. in today's politics. Now, you it's know, social commentary, absolutely, commentary. just like Star Trek, yeah. but but yeah. In, in a different way, in a darker right. way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we didn't even talk about one of the core themes of, and we, this is how the the series starts: is the collateral damage just accidentally caused by these superheroes, just because civilians get in their way. You know, we this is often a joke of the superhero genre: is that you know, like. Superman is fighting a supervillain and they're like throwing each other through buildings and throwing cars at each other Like the collateral damage would be immense yeah. and they just kind of gloss over they that They pretend like there they isn't pretend it. like they magically somehow don't kill lots of civilians and destroy lots of property And every once in a while, you know, if you go into uh, DC and Marvel yeah. Every once in a while you'll show them like stopping something from killing some people yeah. the marquee is falling and then Superman will catch it and you know, that type of thing in, in this show. Forget no, no. about it. Oh, people man. are dying. People are liquefied in this show. Left and right. And the company just pays off the survivors and silence them. Here, sign this NDA. Here's a yeah. hundred grand. Now shit up and yeah. don't talk about this to anybody. I mean, this, every now and then this, this does come up in, in, in like genre deconstructing shows like The Incredibles, yeah. right? Yeah. They had the insurance companies had to insure the superheroes because for collateral damage. And it eventually shut down the superhero program because it was the insurance premiums were getting too high. Um, right, and then but then there's another one, one of our favorite, one yeah. of our favorite books, Super Superpowers. Superpowers, yeah. And the, the idea is that you need to get trained, and if you go through the process, the multi-year process, and you are a legitimate hero, then any collateral damage like that, insurance will cover, will cover that cover for it. you. But if you Can, if you're not certified, it will not cover you. Yeah, you are trained exquisitely to minimize yes collateral damage. So without that kind of a system in place. Yeah. And it's got to be self self um, policed, right? Because no, the government can impose you know rules and regulations on superheroes, but only at the will of the superheroes, right? Yeah, if the superheroes true. don't want to be regulated, what's the government going to do about it, really? And all right, maybe this is a good point to transition to the current season. Okay. All right. So so we're going to talk about season three. Just very basic impressions, and then we're going to go to the spoiler filled. Yeah portion of it so season I, for me i'm loving season three yeah. it's just it's keeping up the pace it's keeping up the interest um the characters some of the dynamics you know they need they do i think a decent job of making sure the dynamics are evolving so it doesn't feel like the same thing over and over again but there's a couple of subplots where i thought that they've lagged a little bit where mm -hmm. they're, they're getting a little bit repetitive but how do you guys feel i i enjoyed watching all of it um, I definitely don't think it's the best season. 
Um, I, I think they are keeping up the average quality mm -hmm. is there. I feel like the acting is fantastic. The writing still feels good. I don't think the writing is as tight, I guess, is, my, is a big comment. Like, it mm -hmm. could be a little bit tighter, meaning that they're they're definitely doing things with certain characters that you've seen, like you said, Steve. Yeah, a little, like, a little bit like they, they, you've seen it before. You've seen that the, 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 this particular dynamic before, that particular dynamic before. But what I did really notice about this season is is the gore has doubled. Yeah. They yeah. just yeah right it's like pretty it's, high. It's, it's pretty high gore volume and yeah. the gore is intense. It's not like a mild wound here and there. Like when you when it's new when, stuff like you've never imagined you've never, you've never imagined seen. happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like when they break a bone, they break a bone, yeah. and you see you see feel it graphically. It. You, you don't just hear it. it. It's like you see it. You see everything. So it's it's right. intense. But in a way, that's a commentary itself. If you because in the we're in the midst of this discussion as a society as well. Like how much gore do we show? And is it respectful not to show it? Mm -hmm. Or perhaps it's sanitizing not to show it. And it actually is a disservice to the public because they mm -hmm. don't see what the reality of a situation is. In this show, we feel the reality, you know, as imagined, you know, by the writers of cause, of course, it's a fake, a fake world, but it does feel like, you know, we this is they're they're not holding back or sanitizing any of the of a realistic level of gore that those kind of superpowers could produce, mm -hmm. you know, like first scene, first episode, A-Train runs through Huey's girlfriend and liquefies her. Yeah, that's the kind of energy we're talking about. That's what would happen. Yeah. We are ants that have to get out of the way of, the, of these giants who are, you know, yeah. stepping on us without knowing, even paying attention. Yeah, the opening scene of season three, which I won't say in detail, but I saw things oh, I yeah. never expected to see. I don't even necessarily want to see it again, but I'm glad I saw it because it was just like, yeah. what just happened? Oh my God. Yeah, for sure. The, the writers <laughs> on this show, and then, uh, and then followed through all the way. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the writers write it, and then the producers okay that, and the director goes for it and actually does it. They are yeah. showing you things that are that are so over the top and so graphic. It is basically the the... The, the as as graphic as it could possibly get. I guess yeah. that's the way I would yeah, I would yeah. describe it. I, I don't think it could be more graphic than what we're seeing, right? <laughs> right, honestly. Right, right. But there is something good about it because it paints the um, it sets the stage mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. Like the stakes are incredibly high. Very high. You know, mm -hmm. we're seeing people die a lot. We're seeing you know, and you know, we're we're, we're seeing le le legitimate characters. You know, everybody knows that in this show, like you know, characters can die in this show. Totally. Um, they do. So I, I appreciate that level of it as well. Again, though, this season I just feel like they they weren't uh, the the quality of the writing wasn't fully where I, I hope it is. I mean, I'm hoping the second again, half. Halfway through the season, you have to give it. You know, I yeah. think I like the, where it's going. You know, any any writing where I'm imagining where the series might be going and I'm thinking about how are they going to get out of this mess. Yeah, they're in a situation good. where you're like, I don't know how they're going to resolve this. Where are they going with it? And there's multiple possibilities present itself. That's good writing. But we also know that the writers tend to not allow you to predict what's going to happen. Yes, which is also good. Right, so even though I'm saying, well, what can they do here? Like, it seems like, you know, we'll get into it when we get to the spoilers part, but to me right now, where I'm at, what did we, what did we see, four episodes? Yeah, we're halfway. I feel like I have an idea of where they're going, and I'll tell you what, I know they're not going to go there. <laughs> right. I just know that they're not going to go right, where right. I think it's going, right? We all know where we think it's going. We'll talk about it. Anyway, right. every series has the issue of the farther you go in the series, the more of an issue you have with being the same thing over and over again. It's hard to be fresh when you're on season three. Yeah, of course. But I think they're doing a great, I actually like the season so far better than season two. I think they're doing a great job. Um, and, you know, you, you, you can't expect like to have no issues with that. It's never going to have the magic of the first season. Of course. You just got to get over that. All right. Ready for the spoiler? Yeah, let's do it. Spoiler Say it. Late. All right, so now spoilers from this point to the rest of the video. We're going to talk in detail about what we liked, maybe what we didn't like, or what, what the best parts of season three so far, and we're only about halfway through the season. So obviously the big plot thing happening in this season is Homelander Unchained. Yeah. Homelander oh now j is off uh, you know, the, any any whatever kind of rails control, they had, him whatever on, rails he was on, he's, he's off. off the, and and he's calling the shots, absolutely. And he's a psychopath, and everyone is tiptoeing around him, just living in absolute fear. You know what it reminded me of? It reminds me of the Twilight Zone episode with the the kids, yes. people to the corn, absolutely. Where, where he's like a kid, 
and everyone is afraid of triggering him because he knows he'll just look at them sideways and kill them. Right. Yeah. Now this is Anthony Starr, right? Homelander. A- Anthony Starr. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is He's great. Killing it. Amazing. I could feel it. I could feel that fear. He is so scary that yes. you could really feel what He's these other people feel. Unpredictable and invulnerable and super powerful. Yeah. He is a scary dude and so, I love his fake smile. The actor yeah. pulls He's, it off so unbelievably well. I so love when, him. So there's many times, if you've seen the show, I'm assuming if you're watching this right now, you're, you're seeing the third season. Yeah. Uh, but throughout the all all three of these seasons, the actor has done this fantastic job of showing just how little humanity the character has, and right? One, yeah. So when he puts on a fake smile, he actually legitimately looks like he's smiling when he smiles, but when he comes down off of that smile, where he brings his face gets scary. Yeah. Because it's not just... Um, I'm relieved to not be smiling anymore. He goes to this very he goes dark, to this very to, dark place. Yeah, because yeah, like his his off camera face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like you know without the makeup on kind of face, which is really oh man. The actor does a fantastic job of that. And the so other the, the other thing that this yeah. that this actor does, I think, is everything has a taunt to it. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. in this season, Homelander is taunting everyone Constantly. all the time now. He's pushing buttons all the time, and and he and he does it through his acting very well. Yeah. It's not just what he does, but the actor is acting it. You can feel him taunting and then well, pulling think, back. I think where that comes from, and like again, if you can do a psychological profile of a character in a show, that's good writing, and I think that's you're encouraged to do that. So, like with Homelander, the the very strong sense that I get is that he's on some level bored. Right? Yeah. Because he's invulnerable. You know, he's surrounded by people he has no respect for because they have no power compared to him. He's better, he's smart, he says it, you know, when he when he's becomes un- unleashed. And so taunting and playing with other people is like the only he's saying that's the only way he's got to keep himself interested and to entertain himself. True. Which makes him really dangerous because he basically said he'll keep going. So there was basically essentially three things restraining Homelander. You know, basically, the son. Well, I was even including the son. I don't think I don't think that that's the case. The three things were Edgar, you know, the head of the company of, of Vaught, who had some kind of parental kind of control over him. Yeah. There was the you know beginning with at the end of second season, Maeve's threat to release the video of the him airplane of video. destroying an airplane with full of passengers, which is tied to the big thing, which is desire to be loved. Right, his desire to have his high ratings and to be seen as the hero, seen as the leader and the good guy. Essentially, he's a narcissist. Yeah, totally. But now all of those things are off the table and he basically called Maeve on her bluff. He told Starlight, hey, I like being loved, but I'll take being feared if that's the only choice that I got. So go ahead, release the video and I'll just kill millions of people and I will show them what home Larry could do. And he basically told Edgar to F off. So he's out and he well, betrayed he, him. And he helped orchestrate getting yeah. rid of Edgar. Which, got rid of him. Yeah. So there's nothing left. He is, he is a godlike, invulnerable psychopath with no restraints. And everyone sees it, and everyone is scared to death, which they should be. Right. And, which they and, absolutely should and be. And this has led to what, what some people are calling superhero torture porn, is what this season kind, yeah. kind of is. Because <laughs> that, that self-referential humor that was in season one and two is pretty much mostly right. gone. It's not there. So so the people, and some people, some reviewers are saying that, you know, you, you need some of that relief that, yeah. that's in there so that it's not a slog. Like Game of Thrones went through that period where it's just like, oh my God, this is something all, good happen? Something good happen? <laughs> and, it's, and it's not happening. And and uh, and even the, the, the superheroes are getting worse and as exemplified yeah. by what you're saying about Homelander. But also the good guys, they just keep getting hurt and they, they keep getting smacked down too. And, it's, it's, and poor Star, Starlight. I mean, look at her with the fist behind her, the clenched fist behind her back. She's trying to be a good poor, girl in a bad world. Oh my know, God. And she's work. like the, one of the very few it, honorable, yeah. genuinely nice people. So it's a slog of a season in that way that, that it's dark and it's and it's exemplified by but that's Homelander. Why I really, but I love it. I just love yeah. Go dark. I want to see Homelander go do the full monkey. I don't know. I don't know if I want I, to see him. <laughs> see him take out a million people Mother's in Mother's Milk City. Because that's, that's, yeah. that's like where we're going. Let's just go there. Let's just do it. And see what happens. So Mother's That's Milk uh, actually like <laughs> said that one of the most important things in this story, he said, what? you have to draw the line so you know what not to step over. Yeah. He told that to Butcher. Yeah. yeah. And and right now, he's the only one that's 
Yeah. Essentially, like, well, him and he's, Starlight. He's the moral center for the boys. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Starlight would like to be the moral center for the heroes, but she can't be because the Homelander won't let her. There's no way to be a moral center. She, there. She's she's ducking she's, and covering right yeah, now. Yeah, she's a sad oh character. She's, she's been exploited her whole life. Yeah. She doesn't know how it's to get step terrible. out of that role. Like, she's she's stuck there. But that so that leads to the question of where they're going with it, right? So we, you know, how far are they going to take this Homelander unleashed plot line? Is it going to be to full supervillain? Yeah, which would be interesting. Maybe that's next season. Season four. Season four could be Homelander as approved. the supervillain. Let's do it. Yeah, season four. It has been approved. Right. We don't know what obviously what's going to happen. They either do that. Do it. Go there, man. Or they kill him. But they, yeah, that's a big risk. Get him yeah. Ready. He, getting rid of Homelander? That's a, get it, but hey, first of all, it would be courageous. I would give him props for doing it. Yeah. It would certainly mix up the dynamic on the show. Yeah. Otherwise, what are we going to do? Another season of Everybody Afraid of Homelander? If they're going to no, do no. that, they better do it in a different enough way, like being a full well, blown right. But you got to think about it. Like, Homelander's a great character, yeah. but there's a lot of things about him I don't like as a supervillain, say, right? Mm -hmm. Because, like we've said many, many, many times, like a supervillain has to have like a legitimate. Modus Nemesis? operandi, right? A supervillain needs to have a reason to be that supervillain. Like just being a psycho, just because he he does. It's just, it's just you know he's the man child, right? Yeah, he's, and he's got he's a, a bag of insecurities. That makes for a good supervillain. It's a different type. They all can't be the same, you know, calculating supervillain. He, yeah, it makes him unpredictable. It makes him more scary in some ways. Uh, but we haven't even talked about the other major plot line this season. So one uh. is one is Homelander Unleashed. The other, the other one, one is, is what it looks like to enter a man's penis. And explode. Which yeah. we saw. <laughs> right. Can we just talk about that before you go to that the thing? Opening scene. The opening scene. The opening scene in episode three. one. The, when, the, when I saw the scene, first off, I wasn't even sure what I was seeing. Yeah. I, I'm like, is that his ass? I didn't know what he climbed into until... Which uh, orifice he went yeah, into. Which yeah, which orifice he went into. <laughs> then it occurred to me. I'm like, oh, 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 holy shit. Like, I'm actually seeing this situation unfold in front yeah. of me. Total Ant-Man satire, right? I mean, yeah, totally. Yeah. But then it went in a, a place that I never thought would happen. Like, him going, that guy turning back into full size and, and exploding this dude from the, from the, the midsection down. Yeah. I couldn't believe I saw it. it yeah, yeah, it was, it was like, great. The hand goes over the mouth. Like, yeah. but again, that gets Did to I the see that? that gets to the realism point that we made early yes. on. That yeah, they, of course they're going to indulge in every kind of vice. Yeah. Just because just because they're superheroes doesn't mean they don't have all those frailties. All right. The other main plot line is Butcher getting his hands on temporary V. Yeah, right? v. Temporary yes. temp V that for one day will turn you into a superhero, and. This creates a conflict between Mother's Milk and, and yeah. the Butcher because the Butcher's like, hey, we have to fight on their terms. We're, we're, they're, they're invulnerable. They're superheroes. We're mortal. If, if we don't have this power, we can't fight them because Butcher is just to destroy them at all costs. Huey is kind of being dragged between him and Starlight and the Butcher's winning. Uh, and yeah. Mother's Milk is being you know, Jiminy Cricket to the Butcher <laughs> and saying... We are not them. If we become them to fight them, then what? Then what are we? We've lost, you know. Yeah. And he's right, but it's a genuine dilemma. Yeah, it is. You know, where you know, Butcher's like, well, it's just temporary, and we'll do it to destroy them, and then it's then it's over. And in a way, it would definitely be better to have only temporary superheroes and not permanent superheroes. Mm -hmm. And Vought realized that because hey, we can control them if they're temporary because they don't get the next dose unless we give it yeah. to them. It's a great um, yeah. Like, whereas homeless people like homeless, it's a great solution. So maybe that's where things are headed. Maybe sees the end of this season or the next season could be armies of temporary V superheroes fighting the permanent superheroes. To you know what I mean? To, right. To yeah. get rid sure. of them, sure. engineer that. This the permanent superheroes all get rebranded as villains. And Vought has to save the world from the villains that they but created. Who knows? We're seeing we're seeing by episode four that the boys as a unit is starting to break down. Totally, oh, yeah. totally. Um, now I think it's possible that they're going to realize that they do need each other. Right? Yeah. They do have a common enemy, and I, I agree. It's interesting what you're saying. You know, Bob's idea, or, or who, who came up with the idea that 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 he might become a villain. Well, yeah, we Bob and I had both been talking right. about that. But so yeah. if he does. You know, that could galvanize them again. Yeah. But there is a massive breakdown. And, it, you know, you get to a point where you're kind of uncomfortable about what's going on. Like, everything is really uncomfortable and fucked up right yeah. now. You like, want them to work together. Yeah, you want you, them to be You want unit, cohesion. But, yeah, they don't have it. Yeah, so I think I think um, the second half of this season 
is definitely going to take us to a, a particular place. I really, uh, I'll put my chips down that, that um, Homelander is not going to kill a million people. I don't think they're going to take it that far because that is so. And that's one pathway. Dark. Whatever he goes progressively dark, progressively towards the villain end. The question is, does he get outed publicly? Right? If he, they yeah. release the video for the plane, you know, he's outed. So that's really the big one. Big question in the second half of the season. The other question is, how much will Butcher and Huey embrace the temporary superpowers? Yeah. And, and will Mother's Milk and yeah, will they come? Will they ever relent, or will they bring them, drag them yeah. back? You know, to, to their way of seeing things. And and this Soldier Boy, I mean, he's, and Soldier Boy is another variable now. Is yeah. he, we don't know enough happen? about him. We don't really know. We were yeah. talking about this earlier. Like, what do we know about this character? Well, okay, so we know. Well, we know the actor Jensen Eccles was in Supernatural. Sure, you do know that. But Soldier Boy <laughs> himself. You know, he he seemed to be a product of the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. the way he was treating women. So he's he a was, sexist misogynist by modern standards. And yeah, he's been on absolutely. ice for decades, and so now he's anachronistic. He's certainly... Tortured like, for decades. Yeah, they, you know why everybody hated him. Like, other than him just being an ego, egotistical... Yeah. Even his girlfriend admitted to him, I, I never loved you. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, was, it was basically... He hated you. Not yeah. that I never loved you. I, everyone hated you. It was everyone a, hated you. Yeah. So I want to learn more about him, and, and I don't even know what his goals are right yeah. now. We don't know yeah. anything about the character so he's we're, a wild card right now he's a wild card and he went so they they went after they thought he was dead and they were looking for the weapon that killed soldier boy thinking they could use that weapon to kill homelander it turns out soldier boy's alive and he is the weapon and we and he you know we know from his effects on kamiki that he can take away superpowers which might be the only way to kill homelander if he explodes on him right so but that's, that's the other easy. pathway I, that, that's not going to happen oh. i think that's way too easy yeah even though oh, that's so, weird. that's homelander what it seems that's what i was saying before it seems like the, that's where the plot should go because all the set one. pieces have been put in play but how could they possibly yeah, go there they it's too easy there. they won't go there i mean is it easy because then, then, then soldier boy can take over as the main you know foil yeah maybe he becomes the next homelander, bad guy and then we have a different Homelander like villain who's also in invulnerable and can't use the weapon against himself. So now yeah. they have a bigger problem. All right. They used him to take out, you know, it's like out of the frying pan into the fire. They take out Homelander, yay, and oh no, Soldier Boy's even more invulnerable and more of a douche. All right, weird idea. Yeah. Do you think it's possible that somehow Homelander shifts over to the good guy side? Is that even possible? Uh, I would be disappointed because it's so not his character. Unless yeah. there's, unless there's no some, hints, not even a hint of that yeah. possibility. I mean, they really, they only won, I think it was only one superhero that had mentalism powers, right? Um, Mysterio, was that the name of the character? Well, he was part of, uh, he was part of Soldier Boy's crew. But, but they, but who, but you know, what, could Homelander be vulnerable to mentalism superhero powers and could that bring him in? I don't know. There's so many, when, once you have yeah. variables like that in play, it's, it's hard to predict. So will Homelander become a villain? Will he return to some kind of semi-stable good guy status? Will he die? All right, Those the are other, three very different pathways that this, and all three I think are perfectly will, viable and, and probable. Probably. Butcher could become a villain. Nah. Could be. He could, or they, or or they could just embrace the temporary V as a way of like going to war against the permanent superheroes. Yeah. And, you know, so there's a lot of different pathways you could take. Again, that in my book, that's good writing. I'm really enjoying speculating about it. The only downside is when what actually happens is less interesting than all the stuff we're speculating sure, of about. Course. And we've experienced that before, most notably in Battlestar Galactica. Oh hell yeah! Met ah, with, yeah. The speculation was way Me better, better, than, way what better actually, than what they, the, than what they, what so, they wrote. It was like, really? That's what was happening the whole time? Come I, on. I'm getting tired of Huey and Starlight's relationship. It, that's what yeah. that's what the thing I mentioned before. It seemed like they're circling the drain with that. Like, you know, it's not progressing forward. And it feels like it's in a really weird place right now. It's in a weird place. But it, it keeps going into like these weird places, then they then they seem to find you their base again. I think I don't I think you're undercutting it. I mean, their their relationship is growing. They now they're not just you know, romantically involved. They actually love each other now. And, yeah. and Starlight is trying to save Huey from Homelander. Homelander's trying to save Starlight from... Huey's trying to save Starlight from Homelander. They're both basically trying to save each other. And now they're fighting over whether or not Huey should take the temporary V. And, you know, I it's think it's interesting. That. Huey walked away from he her walked towards away from Butcher. Her. That's yep. it. He made a decision. You know, That's again, not an irrevocable I, I decision, but it was definitely no, a big decision. Like, it's a, it was, I, it's I, a line. It, it was a big deal. It was a big deal, but I, deal. I, I kind of interpreted that. I don't, I don't interpret that as a, a relationship ending situation. No, it was not no. a relationship ending, but it was big. It was big. He's got some explaining to do when he... <laughs> 
when he gets back. Yeah. But the thing is, she has to understand where he's coming from. Yes. She has to understand yeah. where he's coming from. He's he's powerless, and he, he you know he and he and now he. I loved when he used it for the first time, and he was giddy. Yeah. You knew that he was loving yes. it. The actor did a great job. And yeah, when they the interplay between him and Star and Starlight when when he was like, it was horrible. And she's like, You loved it, didn't you? And he's like, it was so cool. Yeah, yeah. That was, I great. That was a great scene. Scene. I love him. He's so funny. When Jack Quaid, by the way, he was the son of Dennis yes, Quaid. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I it's really, I really actor. like him. Another part of the, the, the season I really loved was, was when we flashed back to Nicaragua. Yes. yes. When the CIA yeah. agent was young and she was in charge of basically a drug trade to, to gain yeah. to earn money. And <laughs> I was Iran Contra, right? Yeah. Man, and showed how she was totally competent. She, was great. she called it like she literally said, These superheroes are untrained, they're dangerous. Giving away and our they're position. giving away our position and everything she warned about happened. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And then we learned about uh uh, Black Noir as well. Mm -hmm. Like we learned about why he wears the mask and the helmet and everything. It was really cool to see him without his helmet on. Yeah. You know what I mean, I didn't know who he was. And again, it was so funny. Like, so now we have the first time that the uh, that uh, the Vought CEO shows up in the series is back in the '60s now, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes all the way back to the very beginning. Yeah. He's like starting this relationship yeah. with the government. We're going to have superheroes involved with the government. He's been trying to do this for a very long time, and he is psychologically manipulating. The, a superhero all the way from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, yeah. man. Yep. He so he's around. a big player, and he's not out, by the way. He's not out. He's, he's not away. out. No. Yeah, yeah. I suspect that he might have powers. Yeah. Well, that's the other. He, well, we know his daughter has powers, yeah. right? Why, why wouldn't he have given himself powers? He also is. That's a good point. I never. I didn't actually didn't think of that. I'm surprised because he also has balls. Like he will stare down Homelander. Hell yeah. Like, with, why, but maybe he maybe, is not afraid. Maybe. You know? who, who knows? He, but he will, he'll replace his hand with, with uh, Homeland. We though. think. Because he was he was too dismissive of him just because his his rating was lower than Star, Starlight. That was, his, that was his way of controlling Homelander. Yeah. It wasn't genuine. Yeah, but, and Homelander and, grew out of the Homelander to be broke free of yeah. that control. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, yeah, I think he went a little bit too far. Embarrassing Homelander in front of people? No. Yeah. Never do that, man. Yeah. Never do that. So clearly right, yes. we're enjoying the season. We could go for a long time. Long time. Yeah, for a long time. The, the writing is great. The acting is great. Carl Urban is awesome as the butcher. Andy star. Yeah, just everything is good. You know, it's just one of those at, knocking it out of the park kind of series. And, you know, we're so sick of superhero genre yeah. everything because we I'm love not. it, but it's there's been so much of it that my initial reaction to another superhero thing was like, really? I mean, maybe I'll take a break on this not one. Not anymore, though. But this but one is so yeah. different and so fresh. Again, sort of deconstructing the superhero genre in such a good way. For the very first time. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. So highly recommend it. We're looking forward to the rest of the third season and then to season four. Uh, totally hooked. So if you guys enjoy this episode, you can go to alpha quadrant and at number six dot com where you can see uh, links to our podcast because these shows are turned into podcasts. Yeah. You could also see uh, links to our YouTube channel with all our videos. And if you really enjoy the show, you can become a patron of ours. We have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash alpha quadrant and the number six. We will see you all next week. Bye.